Hello everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet this beautiful springtime afghan square. I have my sample one here for you to see and I have worked it up in a few color combinations. I have my purple, white, and gray here. I have a beautiful solid teal color and then I've also worked a variation in the teal white and gray so this is a beautiful afghan square has lots of texture with it it is ranked as an intermediate crochet pattern because of all this texture you can work it as a solid color or you can mix up the colors a little bit as I will do here today and uh, work it in two three or more different colors Today, for the tutorial, I'll be using a worsted weight yarn. I'm working with a Red Heart Super Saver yarn. It's a 100% acrylic yarn, and again, it's a worsted or medium weight. In total, for your square, you're going to need about 120 yards. So you can mix uh, that up as you would like for your different colors, but you'll need about 120 yards in total. Uh, you're also going to need a 5 millimeter or an H8 crochet hook. And I'll put links to these items in the description of my video. Also in the description, you'll find the direct link to the free written pattern, which is on my website at richtexturescrochet.com. And you may want to have that on hand as we work this square together. So thank you so much for joining me. While you're here, I invite you to take a look around. Don't forget to subscribe. This channel is updated weekly with free crochet patterns and crochet stitch tutorials. Now our design today is worked in rounds and we're going to start from the middle of our square and work our way out. Your finished square, once it's blocked, is going to measure approximately 12 by 12 inches. And this is one square that you will definitely want to block according to your yarn label instructions as it is one with lots of texture and uh, tends to wrinkle up a little bit. So you're going to want to block it when you're finished. For round one, we're going to take our color A. I'm going to be using this Aran color. You're going to start by making a slip knot and then by chaining four. You're then going to work seven double crochet stitches into the fourth chain from your hook. Now that first starting chain three does count as a double crochet stitch. So at the end of this round one, you will have a total of eight double crochet stitches, including that starting chain three. Once you have worked your seven double crochets into that fourth chain from your hook, join with a slip stitch into the top of the first chain three. And at this time, you're going to fasten off your color A. You can then go ahead and weave in those ends if you'd like, or leave them until the end. For round two, you're going to take your color B, and I'm going to use this pale plum color, and you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of the same stitch as joining. You're then going to chain one. Next, you're going to work a front post, yarn over twice, puff stitch around the post of the first stitch which is this chain three here. To work your front post yarn over twice puff stitch, you're going to yarn over, bring your hook in front of your work and insert your hook from the front through to the back, out through the front again around the post of that first stitch, 
yarn over and draw up a loop. You're going to do that two times. So that was once, yarn over, bring your hook in front of your work, insert your hook from the front through to the back, out through the front again around the post of the next stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook. That's your front post, yarn over twice, puff stitch. You're then going to work a double crochet into the next space between the stitch you just worked and your next one. So you're just inserting your hook into the space and working a double crochet stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around. Work a front post, yarn over twice, puff stitch around the post of the next stitch. and a double crochet in the next space. Repeat that all the way around. One more front post, yarn over twice puff. You're going to finish off with your double crochet stitch in the next space and then join with a slip stitch to the top of your first puff stitch. That brings you to the end of your round two. For round three, you're going to chain one. You're continuing to work with your color B. You're going to start by working a front post, yarn over three times, puff stitch around the post of the first stitch, which is the puff stitch directly below. So to work our front post, yarn over three times, puff stitch, you're going to yarn over, insert your hook around the post from the front through to the back, out through the front again of this first puff stitch, the same stitch is joining, yarn over, drop a loop. You're going to do that three times. So this is just going to create a slightly larger puff stitch than the one that was just below it. Yarn over, draw through all the loops on your hook. You're then going to work two double crochet stitches into your next stitch, which is your double crochet. There's one and two. You're now going to repeat that all the way around. So around your next puff stitch, work a yarn over three times, puff stitch, one, two, and three yarn over, pull through all the loops on your hook, and then work two double crochet stitches into your next stitch. Repeat this all the way around. At the end of round three, you will have a total of 24 stitches. You're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first puff stitch. And at this time, you can fasten off your color B. You're then going to join your color C 
with a slip stitch into that same stitch as joining. Now using your color C for round four, we're going to chain one. You're going to work a double crochet into each of the first two stitches. So into the top of your first puff stitch and then into the top of your next double crochet. You're then going to work two double crochet stitches into your next stitch. You're then going to work one double crochet into each of the next two stitches. And then two double crochet stitches into your next stitch. Repeat that all the way around and join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of round four, you'll have a total of 32 stitches and you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and then fasten off your color C. For round five, you're going to once again take your color A you're going to join with a slip stitch into that same stitch as joining. You're then going to work a back post single crochet, or sorry, chain one with your color A, and then work a back post single crochet around the post of each of the first three stitches. So the first stitch is your same stitch as joining and when you work this first back post single crochet you're going to work around the chain one and the stitch itself. To work your back post single crochet you're going to bring your hook and back of your work insert your hook from the back through to the front across your stitch post out through the back again yarn over draw up a loop yarn over and pull through the two loops on your hook. That's your back post single crochet. You're going to work one in each of the first three stitches. So there's one and then two and three. You're then going to work two back post single crochet around the post of the next stitch. So there's one and then your second one, you're going to insert your hook around the post and it's going to fall just sort of under that first stitch. And two. Next, work a back post single crochet around the post of each of the next three stitches. There's one, two, and three and two back post single crochet around the post of the next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around and join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of round five, you're going to have a total of 40 stitches. Join with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch and you're going to fasten off your color A. You're then going to take your color B and join in the same stitch as joining with a slip stitch. For round six with color B, chain one 
Work a single crochet into each of the next four stitches. You're then going to work a puff stitch, chain one, puff stitch, chain one, in the top of the next stitch, two rows below. So down on your color C row, you're going to, in the stitch directly below, your next stitch, so this is my next stitch here, and that stitch directly below it into the top of the stitch, you're going to work a puff stitch. So yarn over, insert your hook into that top of that puff stitch two rows below, and work a puff stitch. That's your yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, drop a loop three times, yarn over, pull through all the loops on your hook, then chain one and one more puff stitch into that same stitch. And chain one. Now up top, you're going to skip that stitch directly behind and you're going to work a single crochet into each of the next four stitches of your previous round. So there's one, two, three, and four. You're now going to repeat into the stitch directly below the next stitch. So if you're looking at your, uh, your round, two rounds below, you're going to actually skip three stitches in between your next puff stitch and this next set of puff stitches. So once again, into the next stitch, but two rounds below, work a puff stitch. Chain one and puff stitch. Chain one. Up top, you're skipping that next stitch and working one single crochet into each of the next four stitches. Repeat the stitch directly below, so you're skipping three stitches, two rounds below, and into that next stitch, two rounds below, work a puff stitch, chain one, puff stitch and chain one. Continue to repeat that all the way around. At the end of round six, you'll have a total of 48 stitches. And just a note, when I am counting my stitches for this round, you're not going to include the chain stitches in between your puff stitches. So you'll have 48 including the single crochet and the puff stitches. You'll have 48 stitches. So join with a slip stitch into your first stitch and chain one. We're not going to fasten off, we're going to continue working with our color B. For round seven, we're going to work a double crochet into our first stitch and into each of the next three single crochet stitches. and into the top of our first puff stitch. So you'll have five double crochets all together. One in each of the next four single crochet and then one into our puff stitch. You're then going to work a puff stitch chain one and puff stitch into the next chain one space. 
So that's the chain one space in between your two puff stitches. And then chain one. Skip the next puff stitch and work a double crochet into each of the next four single crochet and the next puff stitch. So there's one, two, three, and four single crochet and then into the next puff stitch. Next into the next chain one space. So the space in between your next two puff stitch work a puff stitch, chain one and puff stitch, chain one. You're now going to repeat that all the way around. Single crochet in each of the next four, or sorry, double crochet in each of the next four single crochet stitches. And into the next puff stitch. Skip the next puff and into your chain one space. You're going to work a puff stitch. chain one and puff stitch, chain one. Repeat that all the way around. At the end of round seven you'll have a total of 56 stitches. You can join with a slip stitch in that first stitch. You'll fasten off your color B and then join your color A once again. For round eight with color A, chain one. And you're going to begin by working a back post double crochet around the posts of each of the first six stitches. So to work your back post double crochet, you're going to yarn over, bring your hook in the back of your work, insert your hook from the back through to the front, around the post, of that next stitch out through the back again, yarn over and draw up your loop, yarn over and pull through two loops, yarn over and pull through two more. You're then going to continue working a back post double crochet around each of the next five stitches. So you want six in total. And that's going to include your puff stitch. So when you work your, around your puff stitch, you're working it around that entire stitch, a back post double crochet. You'll then come to your first chain one space. Into that chain one space, work a double crochet, triple crochet, and a double crochet into the same chain one space. You're then going to work a back post double crochet around the posts of each of the next 14 stitches. That includes your puff stitches. So back post double crochet around the posts of each of the next 14. What we're going to do in this round is we're going to turn our circle shape into a square and give it four distinct points. So double back post double crochet around the post of each of the next 14 stitches again making sure when you come to these puff stitches you're working around the entire stitch Once you've worked 14 back post double crochet stitches, you'll be at your next corner, chain one space. You're going to work a double crochet, triple crochet,
and a double crochet into that same chain one space. You're now going to repeat that twice more. So back post double crochet around the posts of each of the next 14 stitches and then work a double crochet, triple crochet, and double crochet into the next chain one space. Repeat that twice more and you should have eight stitches remaining. At the end of round eight you'll have a total of 68 stitches joined with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. You're going to continue working with your color A. For round nine, chain one, and you're going to work a front post double crochet around the post of the next or the first stitch, the same stitch is joining. So yarn over, bring your hook in front of your work, insert your hook from the front through to the back around the post of the next stitch, out through the front again, yarn over, drop a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops, yarn over and pull through two more. You're then going to work a back post, double crochet, around the post of the next stitch. Front post, double crochet, around the post of the next stitch, and back post, double crochet, around the post of the next. You're going to repeat that all the way across to your first triple stitch. When you come to your first triple stitch, into that stitch you're going to work a puff stitch, chain one, puff stitch, chain one and puff stitch, chain one all into the top of that triple stitch. You're then going to work a front post, double crochet around the post of the next stitch, followed by a back post double crochet around the post of the next stitch and repeat that all the way across to your next triple stitch. All the way across, you'll finish off with a back post double crochet. Into that next triple stitch, you're going to work your three puff stitches and chain ones all into the top of that next triple stitch. You're then going to continue on working uh, back and front post double crochet stitches and what I do is if I ended on a back post double crochet my first stitch, uh, my first uh, post stitch is a back post double crochet followed by a front post. Alternate all the way across to that next corner stitch and uh, work your three puff stitches and chain one in your triple all the way around.
at the end of round nine, you'll have a total of 76 stitches. You're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. Chain one, continue working with your color A. For round 10, you're going to front post, double crochet around the same stitch as joining. You're then going to work back, a back post double crochet, followed by a front post double crochet around the posts of each of the next two stitches. And you're going to repeat that all the way across to your first puff stitch. So back post double crochet, followed by a front post double crochet, all the way across to that first puff stitch. When you come to that first puff stitch, into the top of your puff stitch, you're going to work one puff stitch, followed by a chain one. Next, into the top of your next puff stitch, you're going to work a puff stitch, chain one, puff stitch, chain one, and puff stitch chain one. So once again, three puff stitches followed by a chain one stitch. There's puff chain one, puff, chain one, and one more puff stitch. and chain one. You're then going to work a puff stitch into the top of your next puff stitch. Chain one. And you're then going to continue working front post double crochet stitches around each front post double crochet and a back post double crochet stitch around the post of each back post double crochet. You're going to continue all the way across to your next puff stitch and you're then going to repeat work a puff stitch and chain one into the top of the next puff stitch followed by three puff stitches and chain ones in the top of the next and then a puff stitch into your next puff stitch just as we did before and then your front and back post double crochet stitches. So you're going to continue all the way around until you come to your first stitch and then join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of round 10, you will have a total of 84 stitches. You can join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. Fasten off that color A and join your color C in the same stitch as joining. For round 11 with color C, you're going to chain one. You're going to work a back post double crochet around the posts of each of the next nine stitches. So back post, double crochet around that first stitch and each of the next eight stitches. So for a total of nine, You're then going to work three double crochet stitches into the top of the next puff stitch. Next, work a back post double crochet around the posts of each of the next 20 stitches. So all the way across to your next center puff stitch, your corner puff.
you'll have 20 back post double crochet stitches along this side and then into that next stitch work three double crochet stitches you're going to repeat this all the way around and then join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch At the end of round 11, you'll have a total of 92 stitches. Join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and fasten off. You're then going to join your color B with a slip stitch into that same stitch as joining. and chain one. With color B for round 12, you're going to work a double crochet into each of the first 10 stitches across to your corner stitch. We're just working in the tops of our stitches Into your next stitch, work three double crochet stitches. Across your next edge, you're going to work one double crochet in each of the next 22 stitches, all the way across to your next corner stitch, and then work three double crochet once again into your corner stitch. Repeat this all the way around until you come to your first stitch, working a double crochet in each stitch and three double crochets in your corner stitch. And when you come back to your first stitch, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of round 12, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. You will have a total of 100 stitches. For round 13, continue working with your color B and chain one. You're then going to work one back post double crochet stitch in each of the next 11 stitches. And this will bring you across to your corner stitch, to your corner double crochet. So one back post double crochet in each of the next 11 stitches. When you come across to that corner double crochet, you're going to work three back post double crochet stitches all around the post of that next stitch. So there's one, two, and three. So three back post double crochet stitches all around the post of that same corner stitch. You're then going to continue working back post stitches, double crochet stitches, working one back post double crochet in each of the next uh, 24 stitches, sorry, the next 22 stitches, all the way across to your next corner stitch. When you come to your next corner stitch, you're going to work three back post double crochet stitches into that corner stitch and actually it is actually 24 uh, back post double crochet stitches all the way across. 
So one back post double crochet in each of the next 24 stitches and three back post double crochet stitches into that next corner stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around and uh, finish off by joining with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of round 13, you're going to have a total of 108 stitches. You'll join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and chain one. We're going to continue working with our color B. For round 14, you're going to work a front post, double crochet around the post of the first stitch, followed by a back post, double crochet around the post of the next stitch. You're going to repeat that five more times across to your corner stitch. So front post, double crochet around the post of the next stitch, and back post, double crochet around the post of the next. Repeat that for a total of five more times until you come to your corner double crochet stitch. When you come to your corner double crochet stitch, you're going to work three triple stitches, but you're going to work them over top of that corner stitch and into the double crochet stitch two rounds below. So yarn over twice, bring your hook in front and down into the double crochet two rounds below and work a triple stitch. You're going to work a total of three into that corner stitch. Then once again up top you're going to skip that corner stitch, that corner double crochet and beginning with a back post double crochet, going to back post double crochet in the next stitch, followed by a front post double crochet around the post of the next stitch, and repeat that all the way across to your next corner stitch. When you come to your next corner stitch, once again work your three triple stitches into the stitch that is two rounds below, and then continue working front and back post all the way across, all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of round 14, you're going to have a total of 116 stitches. Join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. You're going to continue working with your color B, chain one, work a front post, double crochet around the post of the first stitch, followed by a back post, double crochet around the post of the next stitch. You're going to repeat that five more times. Front post, double crochet, followed by a back post, double crochet. It's going to take you all the way across to your first triple stitch. All the way across. When you come to your first triple stitch, you're going to work a back post double crochet around that triple stitch. Then into the top of your next triple stitch, your center one, you're going to work a puff stitch. Chain one, puff stitch. 
chain one, one more puff stitch into the same stitch, and chain one. You're then going to work a back post double crochet around the post of the next triple stitch. And then continue working across, working a back post double crochet around the post of each back post stitch and a front post double crochet around the post of each front post stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way across to your next triple stitch and then repeat again, work a back post double crochet in that first triple, work your three puff stitches and chain stitches into the next triple and a back post double crochet into the next a third triple stitch. Then continue working your post, front and back post stitches across to the next corner. You're going to continue all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of round 15, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and you can fasten off your color B. At the end of your round 15, you'll have a total of 124 stitches. Again, when you're counting your stitches, do not count your chain stitches that follow the puff stitches. We're just counting our puff stitches and post stitches. You're then going to take your color C and join your color C with a slip stitch into that same stitch as joining and then chain one. For round 16 you're going to work a back post double crochet around the post of each stitch across to your corner stitch. I'm just going to pull that piece of yarn back. So a back post double crochet in each stitch all the way across to your corner puff stitch. And we're working with our color C. And of course at any time in this design you can switch up your colors. You don't have to follow the same color pattern I, as I did. Uh, if you have lots of colors lying around this would be a great scrap uh, busting crochet square. If you'd like to really bring out a lot of color in it. So just back post double crochet all the way across to that center puff stitch. Work a back post up around that first puff stitch. Then when you come to that corner stitch to that second puff stitch, you're simply going to work three double crochet stitches into the top of that puff stitch. Turn and work along the opposite side and you're going to repeat work a back post double crochet in each stitch all the way across to that middle puff stitch your corner stitch in your corner stitch work three double crochet into the top and then repeat work uh, those back post stitches and your double crochet stitches in each corner all the way around when you come back to your first stitch join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch At the end of round 16, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and fasten off your color C. At the end of round 16, you'll have a total of 132 stitches. For round 17, you're going to take your color A and join your color A with a slip stitch into that same stitch as joining.
You're then going to work a back post double crochet once again, a chain one and work a back post double crochet in each stitch all the way ar around to your corner stitch. So all the way across, work a back post double crochet in each stitch across to your corner. When you come across to your corner, I just have a few stitches left here. You're going to do the back post double crochet into that first regular double crochet stitch. And then once again, work three double crochet stitches into your corner stitch. You're then going to repeat that all the way across to your next corner, back post double crochet in each stitch all the way across to your corner stitch, then work three double crochets into that corner and continue all the way around. When you come back to your first stitch, you're going to join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. At the end of round 17, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. That brings you to the end of your springtime square. You're going to fasten off that color A. Go ahead and weave in any ends. And again, this is one square that I definitely recommend blocking. Uh, I have my original sample here alongside my other one it just really makes the stitches pop and stand out a little bit more and it will reduce that curling that you might see around these post stitches so thank you so much for joining me and uh, learning how to make this springtime afghan square enjoy if you happen to make a square i look forward to seeing it you can tag me on social media uh, rich textures crochet and I'll come over and say hello. So again, thank you for joining me Don't forget to subscribe and I look forward to seeing you again next time until then happy crocheting. Bye mm -hmm.